Welcome to Story Chats at Inspi Romance. I'm Elizabeth Madry and I'm here with my two co-hosts. I'm Valerie Comer. And I'm Narelle Atkins. Joining us today is our guest, Angela Ruth Strong. And Angela Ruth Strong sold her first Christian romance novel in 2009, then quit writing romance when her husband left her. Ten years later, God has shown her the true meaning of love and there's nothing else she'd rather write about. Her books have since earned top pick in Romantic Times, been optioned for film, won the Cascade Award, and been Amazon bestsellers. She also writes nonfiction for spirit-led women, woman, spirit-led woman. To help aspiring authors, she started Idaho Writers, where she lives in Idaho, and she teaches an expert online, teaches as an expert online at Write That Book. I read super well. Thank you for <laughs> joining us, Angela. Thanks for having me and making me sound so good. Well, you, you did that. You wrote that, and I read it. So. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> Team effort. Team effort. Yay. All right. So today we are talking about the grand gesture um, for in, in case like that's kind of a writer term. I don't think most readers are like, "Ooh, now it's time for the grand gesture. That's not how we are in our reader brain. So in case you are not also a writer um, or you don't like you know, jargon. A grand gesture is that thing that either the hero or heroine does when they realize, oh, I messed up and I need to fix this. So after the inevitable breakup in the latter half of the novel, right? I mean, that's the beauty of genre romance is, you know, like I love genre fiction in general because I love knowing what I'm going to get. And um, so with romance, you know that there's going to be a problem they're going to break up and then there's going to be this amazing thing that fixes it all. And that's so that, that amazing thing that's today. <laughs> so um, my first question is what makes a grand gesture grand and not just nice? Um, so well, can like, I, oh, oh, I have to hop in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I love grand gestures. I love oh, yay. Grands. And so what you're saying about, you know, there's going to be a happily ever after. What I love about a grand gesture is when there's a surprise to it and it happens in an unexpected way. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Oh, that's good. Yes. And yet no, it is... needs to still be really inevitable. Right. Yeah. You need to look at it and go, oh, I should have seen that coming. Yes. But yeah. you don't. Yep. Yeah. All right. What about you, Narelle? What makes it grand think... versus nice? I think... The, it being an accident sometimes like I think it can all everything can be all planned out to be this beautiful grand gesture and then everything can go wrong but everything going wrong actually makes it perfect if that makes sense mm -hmm. I don't quite know how to explain that any better than that I think a grand gesture is an introvert's idea of hell to be perfectly honest <laughs> Because I think a grand gesture needs to have that public aspect. It's not a grand gesture. It's not a private moment. It's a moment where other people are watching and are seeing and experiencing what's happening. So if it, I always said to my husband, do not ever do that to me. <laughs> uh, I never I, wanted I, to be the recipient of a grand gesture. I disagree yeah. with that. I don't think that the grand gesture has to be public at all. Um, I think it has to be big and I think it has to relate back to what broke them up, but I think it can be private. I don't, uh, maybe I like that's the just idea. my introvert speaking, but I just, I don't <laughs> think it has to be, you know, a proposal on the scoreboard of the World Series that. Although that would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or well, like somebody else. Norelle, what Norelle said about there being an accident involved, that makes me think of um, Kara Isaac's book, Till There Was you or then there was you and there was you yeah because he rushes off the stage and he's professing his love to her not realizing he has a microphone on and everybody can hear it yeah so it was private in a way but they all got to participate at the same time <laughs> yeah. yeah i didn't even write that one down for when we get to books with the best grand gesture because i'm like norelle's gonna mention it but now <laughs> oh, <yeah>. angela totally <laughs> stole your, is that your favorite too oh. yes it is oh and it's, it's so because... good and yeah. it was built up so well. Um, we're probably jumping ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. um, but it was just the way it was set up, like it was meant to be this private moment that suddenly everyone's heard of. And the entire stadium of people is invested in the answer. And you can hear the, the whole back, 
everything, all the interplay of what's going on behind it just gives me, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. I think yeah. it's one of the best grand gestures that I've read in CCR for sure. I know I've said on this podcast, probably, what do we have? Like six episodes and probably six times. I've said that I read this book three or four times a year uh, and, and the grand gesture is absolutely part of why it is eminently rereadable is because it's just, it's everything. So Yeah. Yeah, if you haven't read that one yet, we're going to just keep re- recommending it <laughs> until you finally the, get in. And that make it easier for our listeners because it's not like they're going to get a whole new reading list every week. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, so if there's duplicates from week to week, then they, you know, it simplifies. A must read. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I want to circle back. Can you have a low key grand gesture? Yes or no? Valerie, what do you think? Yes. Yes, you can. It doesn't need to be, will you marry me across the teletron or whatever those things are called. It can be something um, much more quiet and um, more internal. It really has to uh, echo the story though and their, their relationship. Just not everything, I don't know, some authors do the really big all the time. I'm looking at you, Angela. I know. <laughs> and That's my life too, just so you know. <laughs> drama everywhere, <laughs> uh, which is great. But I've read some very low-key touching moments. And some grand gestures aren't, aren't that, that grand in a way. I've read one recently where, you know, he came running to the hospital um, because her mother was, I can't, I can't even remember which book it was. I'm sorry, I didn't write it down. But, and it was just, that, you know, she didn't expect him there because they weren't together. But is that a grand gesture? Kind of, but not, not grand still. It's a private and, um, and fitting to the circumstance. It was grand to her. Like, and that's to me, I think, yeah, you know, it has to be grand to the, you know, if the heroine is the one making the grand gesture, it has to be grand to him. If he's the one doing it, then it needs to be grand to her. And whatever that means based on how you've established the character, um, you know, with then there was you, um, Josh, right? Is it Josh? Yeah. Yeah, Josh. <laughs> um, I read it all the time. I can't remember the character names, but you know, whatever. Um, he is a public person because of what he does. And so it makes sense that that became part of the grand gesture. And she is like intensely not a public person. So I loved that the juxtaposition of that because he was trying to meet her where she was, but just like throughout the whole novel, she knew that his career was going to be absolutely the last thing she wanted in the grand gesture too. Um, (laughs) You know, so it has to, it has to fit the people. Um, and be grand to them, which mm-hmm. is not necessarily maybe what is grand to you or me. I but think. it becomes grand to the reader because in theory, we're so invested in the story that we're yes. feeling it and um, living it with them. Even if it's not our personality type, we're still like on our, on our edge of our seat, just kind of waiting to see how that's going to play out. All right, so um, best grand gestures from CCR. We've covered Then There Was You, which I think probably gets the gold star and the gold medal and like the crystal cake plate from the bit. I, I'm going to argue with that. I'm going to argue. I oh, like that argue. one. Oh. I have read that one and I liked it, but there's a reason that I wanted Angela on this particular episode. Ooh, okay. <laughs> So I'm going to go with um, her book, Finding wow. Love in Sun Valley, Idaho, oh, because that is so dramatic. Okay, now I'm going to mess this up, so you can correct me, Angela, if you okay. want to, but early on in the story, this guy is a, a, a river rafting guide, but there's a, a river that he won't do because it's so bad and it's virtually impassable, and he's had a bad experience, and he's got just a more than healthy respect for it. Am I I on track so far? Perfect. Okay, good. So 
in that moment when she is leaving and I don't even remember what happened, why the roads are closed and everything's closed and the only way he can get there is to raft the stupid river, but he doesn't. That is a very grand gesture, and because she knows that he's facing his deepest fear. So, <clears throat> spoiler alert! Sorry about that, yeah, people. That's, that's okay. Put it out of your head and read the book and enjoy <laughs> it. Um, but that, to me, was like one of you can just see that one like playing out on the screen. Okay, and yeah. I think that the idea of facing your deepest fear should be a part of the grand gesture as well, because you're. You're afraid of it, but you're afraid even more of losing the person you love. So that helps you overcome it. Sure. And for me, writing Christian fiction, that's what our relationship with God is supposed to be like. When we have a fear of God, we have these other fears, but our fear of God is greater and it helps us overcome everything that would keep us from him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I go ahead and add my-, my Yes, favorite? please, yes. Um, it comes from the book, Even If, and it's by Bethany Real. Uh, spelled R-I-E-H-L, okay. and she has a character who's, throughout the story, there's a spiritual element where she's um, learning about pursuing God, the idea of selling everything to buy a field, you know, if the pearl of great price, right. um, and then in the end, her, the man that she falls in love with takes her on a, a geocaching adventure, and they, they find this geocache, and they open it up, and he's bought her this land, because he sold, wow. sold everything he could to buy the land for her. And it was the idea that Jesus does that for us. Mm. And so that was just like really powerful to me because it wasn't just him doing something for her, but it was an example of how much God loves us. Oh, that's amazing. Mm. That's yeah, really it was really cool. powerful. That's cool. And re I was rereading all these today and I like started tearing up. <laughs> each one. Here I am again. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but that's the best. That's the sign of a good one right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, did, Narelle, what are you, what about you? What's, what's your, other than then what there was you, what, what else did you choose for great okay. grand gestures? Okay, well, other than then there was you. The one I actually chose was um, Cherish Me by Autumn MacArthur. Okay. Now, interestingly, um, the word grand gesture actually appears a couple of times in the story. So, um, Matteo, who's the hero in this particular book, wants to do a really big grand gesture for Nay. And it's uh, um, second chances, romance, and he wants to get this right. But what makes it such a beautiful grand gesture is everything goes wrong and it does not go according to plan. And what he plans to do doesn't happen. But the way the story ends is actually perfect for the characters and the, and the whole story. And it makes a lot more sense. And I think in many ways is even more heartfelt because it resolves a lot of issues and stuff as well. So without giving any spoilers, sometimes the best grand gestures I think can be the ones that don't actually go according to plan. Sure. Sounds like I, we have a common theme with that one there. Yeah, right. <laughs> mm. Absolutely. Mm. Um, I chose, and it's a fairly new book. Um, I happen to be reading it while I was trying to do my homework for this. Um, Her Continue. Best Friend by Hannah Jo Abbott. It just came out um, earlier this year. And basically at the end, um, I mean, with the title, you know that they're best friends, right? Friends to lovers. Um, and she just has this dream to um, that, that she sees only able to accomplish by leaving the small town where they live and finding a city and getting this, you know, particular job that would let her go into this specific industry and, and progress. And he finds a way to let her accomplish her dream and still be in the small town with him so that, you know, he, he, cause he doesn't want her to have to give up her dream to choose him. And she's really torn about this. So he finds a way to make it possible for her to have both which I thought, and it's not, you know, it's not huge and amazing, but it's really, really sweet because he, you know, he doesn't want to lose her either. He doesn't want to say, choose me instead of your dream. He instead finds a way that she could choose both if she wanted, which I thought was, was really sweet. It was a, it was a nice, sweet moment. And I, I like that you use the word choose because in researching grand gestures, a lot of people don't like grand gestures. They feel it's like manipulation in a tuxedo. But I think the idea that it's giving them the choice, it's, it should be just putting themselves out there saying, I'm here for you. I want the best for you, whether it's me or not. So I like that you use the word choose. 
And I, it's funny because until you said that, I couldn't have told you specifically why like the big public moments are cringy, but that's exactly why is because Mm -hmm. when they're big in public, it's like, um, Christina Coriel has a series and I'll look it up and put it in the notes. Um, the first book, the girl has been proposed to at people's weddings by like six different guys because oh. she's the bridesmaid. And these guys always figure they propose to her at these weddings. And then she's like, you know, she ha- she says no, which good for her because so many people, if you get proposed to at a wedding, you have to say yes, even if you don't, because there's all this external pressure. There's no choice available. So um I'll, I'll put the name of the book. I'm trying, I'm drawing a complete blank on it, but, um, I've read it, but I don't remember the title either, okay. <laughs> but, but that the idea that the grand gesture includes choice is I think important to me. And I never really consciously recognized that. So that's exactly nail right there on the problem. I'm mixing my metaphors constantly tonight, apparently. <laughs> It's a new thing. We're being the lines. We got it. <laughs> All right. Um, more books, or do we want to move to movies? Movies. Movies. Well, All right. Always books. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back for more books from Valerie after we talk about movies. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So Narelle, on screen, grand gesture, best one. Um, the one that immediately came to mind, so I went and rewatched it to work out why, is an officer and a gentleman. And that's a very old movie that released back in the early 1980s with Mm -hmm. Richard Gere and Deborah Winger. And I think what I loved about the grand gesture at the end is she's working on the the production line on the factory floor. And he walks in in his officer uniform, walks up to her, kisses her, picks her up in his arms, and he walks her out the door to a new life. And it really was such a great metaphor for what was actually happening in the story. And basically he was rescuing her and, True Love was happening and it's the iconic song Up Where Love Lift Us Up Where We Belong is going on in the background as well. So that was the movie that first came to mind for me. Love it. All right, Angela, what about you? Oh, I wrote down a bunch of them, but (laughs) I'm going to go with Arthur. Have you guys seen the remake of Arthur? No. Uh, Is that Kira Knightley? No. No? Okay, then no. I don't think I have. Yeah, it's Russell Brand and he lives in New York and he's this billionaire heir that's supposed to inherit the company. But his mom is afraid because he's kind of an idiot. He like buys Batmobiles and crashes them. It's a comedy. Um, So his mom's worried that investors won't invest in the company unless he is supposed to marry someone who's good in business. So he's supposed to marry Jennifer Garner. Um, She's a crazy person. And so there's this huge moment where he's walking, he's in love with the other girl, but he's walking or he's at the front of of the aisle to get married. And he ends up giving up everything um, for the other woman. And he like, he he takes off his tuxedo. He's in his underwear. He runs across town in his underwear and he goes to Naomi's house and he's outside the window and he professes his love to her. And she's looking out the window and she says, you know what, Arthur, I can't be your mom. You need to learn to live on your own. I can't, I can't just take care of you for the rest of your life. I'm sorry. I love you. Goodbye. And for me, like that's, that's, she's sacrificing her love for him because she cares enough for him to want what's best for him. And so it's a shock to the audience, but it makes us more invested. And so then he actually has to do the work. It can't be just the grand gesture to get the girl. So for me, oh, that's nice. Yeah, I love the message and I love that it's fun and over the top and then there's a good message with it. Okay, I love it. Valerie, you didn't come up with any, did you? I did not come up no, with any. No, I sent you suggestions. No, no. No, all right, all right. So I chose, um, and I had such a hard time because I have like a thousand that I mm-hmm. could choose. Um, but I ended up choosing um, Never Been Kissed uh, Drew Barrymore. And she has, she went undercover in this high school for the movie. Um, and so she went undercover to try and write an article about, um, high school kids today. And she ended up falling in love with one of her teachers and her boss got a hold of the notes and they published this whole expose about teachers being too close to their students, which gets the teacher in huge trouble. 
um, because she's not a student though, you know, and so that was hard the whole way through. So then she writes a piece to where she just basically lays her heart bare and uh, says, you know, she's going to be at the baseball game before, you know, on Saturday, it's the big regional championship or whatever. And she's going to stand on the pitcher's mound. And, um, you know, she's very sorry, but if he feels the way she does, then he should come. And so she's there and the clock is counting down and he's not coming and he's not coming and he's not coming. It gets to zero and she starts to walk off and then he comes just tearing across the field. And um, so I, I, I love that one. It's just hearing you tell about it. <laughs> it's Drew really Barrymore has well a lot of. Drew Barrymore has like got grand gestures in every movie she's in. Yes. <laughs> she does. Yeah. I had um, 50 First Dates is yeah. another one. I'm not yeah. movie is grand gesture after grand gesture after grand yeah. gesture. Um, but I love that one because again, you know, she's sort of there, there's choice there, right? Because he mm -hmm. doesn't, he can read the article and not come because she went pushed too hard. Um, so, all right, we have time to do another round of uh, favorite grand gestures, we can do books or movies. To, oh, ooh. So we can start with Valerie. Do you have another book? Grand I gesture? do. I recently read Juliet Duncan's book, uh, um, Promises of Love. It's set in Australia, as I think all of hers are. And the, they start out engaged, but then they have some big problems that they have to overcome and are they going to stay together because her ex-boyfriend comes onto the scene and he is like the perfect guy. He is, he loves the Lord. He's following his dream and missions. He's just like, and he's, and he rescues her when she needs it. And the fiance is like, I am just not really quite this perfect. So the grand gesture really is when this city boy fiance joins the heroine and her previous boyfriend in searching for her dad and her disabled brother um, after a wildfire. And that he would just, that he would set aside his jealousy of the ex-boyfriend and put her family, her needs that, that he's finally starting to understand where she comes from. And to, to do that for her, I thought was, was beautifully done in that one. So, yeah. That's great. All right, Angela, you got another pick? Yeah. Have you guys read The Cubicle Next Door by Siri Mitchell? Oh my goodness. So long ago. Yes. Yeah. Like 20 years ago. It's that's, been a while. that's a book where you get to the ending and then with the twist you want to like start over and start reading it again like rest Ooh, you finish it I so love good. those books all right I'm gonna so read should I ruin the ending for you yeah, yeah. go for it if it's an okay old book, it. okay my I'm notorious for ruining endings but it's because I love them so much <laughs> so but she starts this blog and this was back when blogging was a new thing and she shares a cubicle with a the guy there's like a divider he works on the other side and she's falling for him, but she has so many walls up, she can't let him know that. Um, except through the blog, she's able to express herself, but it's anonymous and she talks about this John Smith that she's falling in love with. And so then he starts reading the blog and talking to her about it. And she's afraid to tell him it's her and that she's been writing about him. And so finally she's like, I just have to. And so she kind of like the never been kissed thing. She's like, all right, on this day, I'm going to uh, say my name because because all these guys reading it are like oh maybe it's so and so who's in love with me and it gets on the news and all this stuff and she's like on this time at this day I'm gonna say who it is and so the guy in the cubicle next door is making a big deal out of it maybe she's a blonde maybe she's a redhead from the south you know like all these exotic things that he thinks she might be and she's like oh he's gonna be so disappointed when he finds out it's me um and then she posts it and she's on the other side of the cubicle from him. And, uh, oh, it's no, she's about to post it and everybody's supposed to guess who she is. And so he, he guesses, he types in the guess and then right before she's about to type in her name, she sees that he guessed it was her. And so she like climbs up on the desk and she looks over the cubicle and it's just like the sweetest thing. And, it, and the truth is that he's known all along. <laughs> and I love it. So if you haven't- That's awesome. One. I haven't yeah. read that in so long. Yeah, okay. wow. I'm that gonna have to read that one. That sounds adorable. That sounds mm -hmm. amazing. She's good at every genre she writes. 
Okay. That's awesome. Narelle, do you have another? Uh, I had one more movie and um, that's Pretty Woman. I just love the ending of that movie yeah. where Richard Gere is driving down the street in um, Hollywood outside her dumpy hotel and he's in the limo and he's bought the roses and of course she lives on the top floor because it's the best and yeah. he goes climbing up the fire stairs and yeah, I just think um, in his tux and I just thought, just love that scene. I think that yeah. really shows and everyone's in the street cheering and watching and yeah I thought that was a really sweet ending for that movie it's so symbolic too which I think is mm. a huge thing for the ending to be symbolic and to have more meaning than just in that moment but for all of us and their lives together so yeah that's a good one because he's afraid of heights so that's yes. part of yes. that too is that he'll he'll climb up this rickety staircase on the outside of a building yeah yeah, and she always she always wanted to be treated like a princess and have the knight come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many layers. So yeah, many yeah. layers. Yeah. All right, so Angela, in a different when we were talking before this, because we got a couple minutes, and rather than giving you another grand gesture, you said you have a five point. Oh yeah, layout of what makes yeah. a perfect grand gesture. Hit us with your five points for a perfect. All right, grand so I I think I've mentioned a few of them along the way. So the symbolic. Mm -hmm. Um, sacrificial, so that would require the overcoming their greatest fear. Surprising, because um, I don't, I don't want to be able to predict the ending. I want to know it's happily ever. I don't want to not be bored with how it happens. Um, sincere, so like I said, it can't be manipulative. And then the last one is satisfying, um, so that we know it's not just making up for a mistake he's made in the past or she's made in the past, but it's a promise of um, their future and I, I a good example of that one would be um, the wedding singer where he sings yes. a song with yeah. you that 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 ending was just like super satisfying yeah um, that was I, on my list of movies too <laughs> yeah. yeah like yeah. I mentioned before my life is my I married the most romantic guy in the world and it's and it's just so sweet like everything and I, I try to do it too like I I knew he wanted his his truck detailed so I went and got it detailed but I didn't stop there I like went and got one of those like giant ribbons to put on the top of it the giant bow Aww. and he but it's it's fun because he's like wow you got me a new car that looks just like my old car <laughs> <laughs> but we just have fun with it and so I that's why I love writing those over the top scenes that's fun cool. that's fun I love it yeah. all right final thoughts from Narelle or Valerie I think we should talk about grand gestures again. I think there's so much to explore with this topic. So I hope we do revisit it at some stage on the podcast. Yeah. I agree. I I think that would be fun yeah. because yeah, there's just so many, we've just kind of brushed over how many different angles there could be. And there was just no way to get into a lot of depth in any of them, but no, it was fun. Thanks Angela. Well, yeah. Thank, thank you for you. having me. And I love that that I wrote one of your favorite grand gestures. <laughs> yeah. So wow. <laughs> Yay. Well, you should add it to your bio. Add it to your bio down there. I will. Uh, Valerie Kilmer's favorite grand gesture. Like you should do an award, Valerie. Ooh. We should award. Yeah. The <laughs> Valerie Kilmer oh. Award. It's much prized. Yeah. Very, very prized because it's non-existent <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> Angela, could you tell everyone where they can find you and your books? Yes. Uh, Angela Ruth Strong dot com all right that's easy and are you in kindle unlimited or are you everywhere ebooks are sold or a combination um of some of both okay so, yeah. yeah whatever yeah. works for you you can find me there <laughs> <laughs> awesome all right then um that's kind of our time we're like right on the money so that's Ooh. amazing um, cool. Thank you, everyone, for joining us at Story Chats. You can find all the info about the show at insperomance.com slash story chats. If you're watching on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. And we'll see you next week. Meanwhile, make sure you take some time to fall in love with a good book. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.